Good evening. Welcome to Loyola Academy Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. Just a few housekeeping things before we get started. Please make sure that you can answer questions this evening doing the, using the Q&A button that's below on your screen. Your camera and microphone is off, so we cannot hear see it all. So any communication you need to do with us, please do it through the Q&A button that's on the screen. After this session, there'll be other sessions you can sign up for together as well to kind of listen to and find out more about colleges. And recording of this session will be available at strivescan.com backslash Loyola um, next week for sure. So that's all the housekeeping things for the evening. Definitely feel free along the way, making sure that you take notes for yourself about these different college and universities as well. So now I'm going to turn it over to the representatives. First, we're going to have up Auburn University. All right, War Eagle, my name is Clay Ann Short and I'm your admissions advisor for Auburn University. Um, so a little bit about Auburn, we were founded in 1856. Um, we have had a name change over the years, but our mission has remained the same. We believe in working hard, pushing forward and doing good for others. We are one of the top public universities in the nation and we are named that again and again every year. We're also known as the best value in our state as well as the absolute best. So we are the number one institution in the state of Alabama, um, which is where our location is. We are in Southeast Alabama, about 30 minutes from the Georgia border, about three hours from the Gulf Coast beaches, and then about three hours from um, the mountains in North Georgia and um, Tennessee. So from you guys, um, the closest airport is Atlanta. It's about a two hour flight home as well. A um, little bit about Auburn City itself. We are in a college town. So the big thing in Auburn is the university. So if you are looking for a full collegiate experience, that is Auburn. And the downtown area is built for you guys from its restaurants, coffee shops, um, to hangout locations. It's all for Auburn age students. And about 30,000 students call Auburn home. Um, about 25,000 are in their undergrad. Our freshman class is typically around 4,800 students, give or take. Now we are the land grant institution in the state of Alabama. So we typically are about 60% Alabama residents, 40% out of state students, but all 50 states are covered and over a hundred countries are represented on campus. Um, and you got y'all state is actually number six um, in our feeder states as well, but all of course calling Auburn home. Um, we have 12 colleges and schools, over 150 majors, so a lot for you guys to choose from. I changed my major four times while I was at Auburn. I tried them all out for you guys. They're great. Um, but if you want to see a list of all of our majors, you can go to auburn.edu slash majors to see those. Um, you can also start as undecided. So as an incoming freshman, you can be a part of our exploratory program. This program allows you to learn about our different colleges and schools and different majors that we have to offer, um, take interest quizzes and personality tests. You can even shadow classes and talk to faculty members and students who are in majors that you're interested in. Um, but no matter what you want to do, you can't go wrong. We're ranked in every field of study, so these are all really strong programs. Um, but going off of academics, of course, another um, big part of that is your experience in the classroom. So even at a large university, we do have surprisingly small class sizes where you do get deep personal attention. 80% of our classes um, have 40 or fewer students. We have a 19 um, or a 20 to one student to faculty ratio. So your professors are going to know you, know what you're struggling with, call you out for skipping class, um, but you're still at a large university, you know, where you have that big school experience where you can storm a football field with 87,451 of your closest friends. Um, get involved with the traditions from rolling to Merce Corner after an Auburn victory to hanging out on Stanford Lawn under our famous clock tower and um, participating in different campus organizations from, you know, intramural and club sports to leadership opportunities like SGA, different program councils, um, religious organizations, cultural organizations, Greek life. We even have something called the Pizza Club where they travel around and try pizza together. So there is something for everyone to get involved with. Again, our traditions like Hey Day, where we all slap name tags on and say hey to each other, our pregame eagle flight before an Auburn kickoff, our marching band, spirit squads, the famous tiger walk. Yes, 
football is more than about the sport. So um, on our game days, um, our traditions um, bring our students together and um, from alumni and current students just with the Auburn spirit. Um, this is probably why our students have been ranked number one for 2020 Princeton's Reviews Colleges with the happiest students. And we have actually been in the top 20 for this list um, for the past five years in a row. So if you want to be one of the happiest students in the country, this is what you need to know to apply. Um, so this information is for my fall um, 2021 applicants. So this year we were test flexible um, with our students. So when you applied, um, you just needed your online application, either our institutional application, or we did join the Common App this year. Um, typically our application requires some form of short answer responses or essay responses, um, but it's pretty straightforward. The second thing we always need is your high school transcript. And the third thing that we looked at this year was one of the four options for supplemental documents. So you got to pick which application or which option made your application look more competitive. Um, as you can see at the bottom, fall 2022. So my juniors, um, those updates will be coming soon this summer. And I'll put a link in the chat in just a little bit and to make sure that you guys have that updated information along with, I'll, I'll send it to you guys as soon as I have it as well. Um, but right now, what the big thing is, you know, coming to see us on campus. We are hosting tours and we'll be hosting tours um, throughout the summer as long as things remain going in a really great direction. Um, so you can go online to auburn.edu slash visit to see all of our um, tour times. We um, give tours four times a day, every weekday, so Monday through Friday. Um, and then we do ha typically have once a month a Saturday tour as well, but you can go and pick a time that is best for you. Um, but again, I'm your admissions advisor. So if you have any questions or want to set up a Zoom meeting or a phone call, feel free to reach out to me. This is my email, clayton.short at auburn.edu. But I hope you all have a good night in War Eagle. Thank you so much, Auburn University. Now we're going to leave Auburn and head to the Rocky Mountains. And next we're going to have University of Colorado Boulder. All right, hi there everyone. Uh, my name is Heather Moser and I am an Assistant Director of Admission here at CU. Um, I am also the Chicago and Regional, so I am based here in the Midwest. Um, thanks for taking the time to join us. Before I kind of dive in, I do just really quickly want to address um, kind of what we got going on in Boulder right now. It's definitely been a little bit um, heavy, not only for myself, my colleagues, but um, for the community as a whole, there was an incident that happened um, yesterday. And so I do think that the best thing to do, the best way to use my time here is to kind of move forward and, and give you all the presentation. But um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to address that before I jumped right in. But um, to move forward uh, to telling you more about CU Boulder, um, we do have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So um, as a student, you're certainly going to have a lot of experience connecting with your faculty, whether it be during office hours um, or within, you know, your classroom experience. Um, I forgot to mention, I'm sorry, Lo uh, Boulder is located um, about 30 minutes from Denver, and then we're about 45 minutes from the Denver International Airport. We are a large public state institution with about 34,500 students enrolled, and then each year we bring in about 29,000, or sorry, 29,500 for our undergraduate students. Um, as I mentioned, we do have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and also have a um, pretty good class sizes as well. So 85% of our classes have fewer than 50 students. And then 50% of our classes are about 25 students or less. There's a lot of different courses available to you in several different fields of study as well. And I will touch on that. We certainly welcome innovation and do support this culture by encouraging our students to get involved in programs like research. So you will have many opportunities to do that. CU Boulder is full of labs and events. Uh, and, you know, we really do like to let students um, experiment, seek answers, and really find solutions in that way. So our undergraduate research office um, does provide, you know, funding and things like that for students who are interested in undergoing research. Switching gears a little bit to talking strictly about academics, um, we really do allow you the opportunity to customize your academic experience. You've got a lot of majors and minors to choose from, as well as concurrent degrees and certificates. So you really are able to explore the areas in which you are most interested in. And certainly if you have interests or passion in two different areas, you can connect those and really find that disciplinary study uh, that best fits you. 
we have seven distinct colleges, schools, and programs to study in. So our arts and sciences is going to be our largest college on campus, home to some great interdisciplinary general education study. Uh, our engineering, so College of Engineering and Applied Sciences is a top ring program, has a lot of hands-on opportunities for students to get experience, especially right away in your freshman year. The Lead School Business is another top rank program that provides opportunities for business students to explore mentorship, global experiences, and so on. Our School of Education um, really has a foundation in democracy, diversity, equity, and justice. So it's a great place uh, for us to teach our future teachers. College of Media Communication and Information has several different um, uh, majors available as well as an interdisciplinary model for you to learn. College of Music is a conservatory style experience and then our program in environmental design is a studio based curriculum so you will have a lot of studio experience within that program. And of course, each of these different colleges are home to several different majors that you can choose from and explore. We also have an undecided option so. This is our program in exploratory studies, which will give you the opportunity to work very closely with an academic advisor in your first year to undergo clear career exploration. It's a great place for students who are undecided or who maybe kind of know what they want to do, but don't quite know how to get there. We have professionals that are on staff to be able to help you do that. Uh, so let's discuss a little bit about housing and dining. So for us, you know, it's really meant to be a place um, more uh, more than just a place where you live and eat. And we really want you to provide we want to provide you that community. Uh, and really a place where we can meet your academic goals and help you thrive in a place that can feel a little bit more like home. So um, really, we just want to help create a sense of balance for you. So there's three different uh, options for you as a first year student in terms of living experiences. Residential academic programs provide you the opportunity to live with students in the same academic area as you and then take classes within your residence hall. Living and learning communities or LLCs are going to be a place where you are able to live alongside students that have a similar interest as you. So for example, we have a gaming LLC, um, a music LLC, as well as an outdoors LLC, and then traditional. So uh, really just living uh, in a residence hall on a floor where you're still gonna have a lot of really cool community experiences as well. Um, but we really do provide this holistic approach to student wellness. And you know that first place you're gonna have experience is going to be in the residential halls. Um, we do um, sit at the base of the Rocky Mountains. So it's absolutely a beautiful place to go to school. There's a lot to do around campus as well. Pearl Street Mall is a great spot for restaurants as well as um, shops cute little bookstores and things like that. It's a wonderful place to go and hang out. The Hill is another um, place where we find a lot of our upperclassmen go and live. And then here's just a look at some of those things that you can get involved in kind of outdoors. So Eldora Mountain is skiing about 30 minutes away. Chautauqua Park is a great place for hiking. We've got an amazing rec center and then Fair and Field will feel kind of like your front yard or backyard. On this picture as well is Folsom Field, um, which is that football field. You can see it says Colorado right there. Um, that is where our um, athletics play. So we are division one and part of the Pac-12 conference. Really quickly, I will just, sorry, this froze. Um, just go ahead and let y'all know that right now we are not currently doing on-campus visits, but we do have a robust set of virtual visit opportunities available to you. I highly recommend checking them out to learn more about the university. And then I will, of course, provide my contact information in the chat. Thank you all so much uh, for being with us and I will go ahead and pass it in. All right, thank you so much, UC Boulder. All right, remember, if you have any questions for any of the reps this evening at all, please put um, questions in the Q&A button that you have below on your screen. Next, we're going to leave the Rocky Mountains, go to the Great Plains, and have the University of Oklahoma. Hello, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get my screen shared here and my timer going so we can get started. So welcome everybody. My name is Scott Hillman and I am with the University of Oklahoma. We do go by OU for short, just because the o, saying University of Oklahoma over and over again can be a mouthful. So I am the Chicago admissions rep for OU. So I do live here in the city. So I'm probably closer to some of you than either of us are to campus, uh, but we'll talk about where campus is located, programs and all the other good stuff today. You can see here on the map of 
Oklahoma, we've got the OU emblem over Norman, Oklahoma, which is where we are located. So Norman is a suburb of Oklahoma City. It definitely has that college town feel to it, but with a quick drive to Oklahoma City, uh, only takes about 20 to 25 minutes to get downtown. So really easy. Traffic there is a lot lighter and a lot better than what we, we usually deal with here in Chicago area. So uh, really easy drive to get downtown. Uh, so if you're looking to explore restaurants, go to concerts, Oklahoma City Thunder Games, or maybe even internship opportunities or other professional uh, development opportunities, those exist right in our backyard. The Oklahoma City Airport is also about 20 minutes away, so a really quick, easy drive uh, to get in to campus. And then there are direct flights from O'Hare and from Midway, so you have several options to get to campus. But like I said, it does have a college town feel to it, but it is in the suburbs. So it also has the added bonus of everything the suburbs has to offer. So if you're looking for uh, places to go out to eat or with movies, things like that. We definitely have a ton of options. Uh, we have 22,000 undergraduate students. And so uh, we definitely have a lot of things going on on our campus as well with that. So a really active student body, uh, but 22,000 undergraduate students is definitely not a small school by any means. Um, but we do try to keep our classrooms more manageable in size. And so our average class size is 32 students uh, and only 4% of the classes that we offer have more than 100 students. So that means on the flip side that 96% of our, our classes are going to have 100 students or less than them. So it won't be like in the TV shows and in the movies where there's, you know, hundreds of students and three story lecture halls. Uh, it's going to be a lot smaller feel than that. Our campus is extremely walkable. So most students would walk from class to class. Uh, you wouldn't have to drive yourself or catch a bus to get around. Uh, everything's walkable. Uh, you could bike, rollerblade, skateboard, take a scooter, maybe a shorter set of wheels if you're running late. Uh, but campus is really easy to navigate. Along with our average class size, our student to faculty ratio is 18 to one. So again, really great classroom sizes. This will help you get to know your professors very well. So if you're looking to go to them to get involved with research opportunities or just need extra assistance, you will get to know them as well as other students in your classes. Um, every state is represented at OU. So we do have all 50 states and well over hundred countries represented with our international student population. You can see here, just the darker the shade of the state uh, means that the more students that we're getting from that state. So obviously Oklahoma, our neighboring states like Texas, Kansas, and Arkansas, but in the Midwest, Missouri, Illinois, and Ohio tend to be our largest states. So we definitely have students coming from all 50. And with that, 44% of our student body are non-residents as we refer to, or do come from out of state. So pretty darn close to getting to a 50-50 split of in-state and out-of-state students. So you wouldn't be the only one coming our way. Uh, so if that is a hesitation for you, uh, learning about all these out-of-state schools here tonight, at least know with OU that we are gonna be about 44% out of state. We have over 170 undergraduate degrees. So there's something for all students to get involved with in the classroom, whether it be majors, minors, fun combinations, you can work out for yourself there. Um, some specialty programs that we're known for are going to include meteorology, petroleum engineering, uh, musical theater, aviation, dance performance, journalism, uh, and a ton more. But beyond that, we have the health professions, we have education, we have engineering, energy management, uh, and more. Again, 170 plus. So lots of options for our students to come in, especially if you're undecided, uh, we've got lots of options for you to explore. We are a tier one research institution. So if you're looking to get involved with research opportunities, we have a ton of things for our students to get involved with. Uh, we have opportunities for freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Outside the classroom, we have over 550 student organizations. So that can be anything from student government, fraternities and sororities, club and intramural sports. Um, we have multicultural student organizations on campus and volunteer groups, fun student organizations like some of the other schools have already mentioned tonight. So a really great way to connect with other OU students. And I think if we were to have some here with us tonight, you'd find out that they're all involved in at least one club. We do study abroad as well. So 30% of OU students do study abroad. We've got 80 different countries and 200 different cities around the world that they are going to. It could be for a traditional semester experience or maybe even something shorter, like a few weeks during the summertime. We definitely want you to come visit campus. It is a very beautiful campus. Uh, Mrs. Dutmer is one of your counselors at your school has been to our campus. So if you get the chance to talk with her, she was just there in early 2020 uh, before the pandemic hit. So she has seen campus herself, uh, but we have campus tours available now through mid-May. We will open more dates as it gets closer in time. Um, and so if you're looking to come visit campus, we've got opportunities Monday through Friday and several Saturdays a month. 
We also know that not everybody is traveling right now. So we've got a ton of virtual resources, including a virtual campus tour. Uh, we have admissions webinars, individual colleges have webinars. You can sign up to meet with a current OU student. So if you're looking to get all the insider information, uh, you can view that and more on our virtual resources website. You can follow us at GoToOU for further information, giveaways, uh, and announcements. Oh, at GoToOU is our handle for all of our social media platforms. So Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And then you can contact me as well. If you do have any further questions, uh, my email address is on the screen here. The 405 number is the campus number. So I will drop in the chat my local number. So either way, happy to work with you. And I thank you again for joining us tonight. All right, thank you so much, University of Oklahoma. That was great information that you shared with us. Now we're gonna leave Oklahoma and head back up to the Rocky Mountains and University of Denver. Let me get my screen here shared for you. All right. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Jen Gross, and I'm the Midwest Regional Director for the University of Denver, and I'm based in Illinois, and I'm so happy that you guys could be with us today. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about the University of Denver. DU is a medium-sized, private, national liberal arts university, and it's dedicated to the public good. We are located in Denver, Colorado, and Denver itself is a city of about 2.5 million people. It's about a two hour flight from Chicago or a 16 hour drive if you're coming by car. Campus itself being eight miles south of downtown, you've got a robust city, you've got the number two tech city in the US. It's one of the top cities for young adults and one of the healthiest cities as well. It has all the government agencies and as you can see, the Rocky Mountains is in our own backyard. Over 70% of DU students complete internships. And so having that robust city contributes to our students' opportunities to participate in those internships, not only in Denver, but also worldwide. And in 2020, US News and World Report ranked DU 80th among national universities. Denver boasts about 300 days of sunshine a year. And when it snows, it typically melts by noon or one o'clock in the city being located where we are. Unless you get two feet of snow, then it might take maybe three days. Um, there's low to no humidity, so you don't get the bitter cold or the sticky heat, no mosquitoes and very few bugs in Denver. Our campus population, we have over 14,000 total students, including graduate and PhD students. So our undergraduate population is about 5,700. That means our student faculty ratio is 12 to one and our average class size is going to be right around 22. 99.9% .9 of our undergraduate classes are taught by professors. DU is a medium sized school with small school attributes. It's also NCAA division one and has 18 different varsity sports, including our new women's triathlete program. You've got 29% of our, of our students coming from Colorado. So this means most of our students are from out of state and nearly 20% of last year's newly enrolled first year students were from the Midwest. Freshmen and sophomores live on campus with guaranteed housing and campus is a walkable 150 acres, as you can see here. DU is residential with that little bit of urban flair. So if Chipotle is a requirement, the first one ever built is three blocks off campus. Students can get around this whole Denver metropolitan area for free by utilizing the light rail and the bus system. And that includes getting out to the airport. You'll see that we have over 100 different academic areas of study. Business is our largest area of study. We've got, it offers a new five, five new 4-1 undergrad grad programs through the Daniels College of Business, and that includes finance, business analytics, management, marketing, and real estate and the built environment. The biological science program is going to be our next largest, and that includes things like ecology, biodiversity, pre-med, sustainability, and new majors like physiology in health and disease, and a new minor, human health science and systems. Engineering and computer science has one of the oldest gaming programs in the US and our international studies program is ranks, ranked sixth in the world. And it includes things like public policy, diplomacy, homeland security, and not-for-profit. The Lamont School of Music has over 300 performances a year and their forte is jazz studies. And I would round out the remaining top majors with psychology, communication, journalism and media studies. And we're also one of 16 colleges and universities that offers a six year law program. In June 2019, 90% of our graduates were employed or enrolled in that next level of education within six months of graduation. 
there are three areas I think that make DU really unique. One is our quarter system. Students take three out of four quarters. So summer for us is an optional quarter. Quarters are 10 weeks long with a six week winter break. Students are taking four to five classes per quarter, meaning they're taking 12 to 18 classes for the year. This means you take 30% more classes than a student on a semester system, which is great for students coming in undecided, which is about 33% of our incoming students, and also for those that wanna complement their majors. So it's not uncommon for our students to take multiples and graduate with double majors, majors and double minors, and additional concentrations. Another area that makes us stand out, I believe, is our undergraduate opportunity for research. Over 200 of our undergrad students will participate in research every year. And with our partners and scholarship program, you present a proposal to faculty and are given funding to work on your project through the year with a faculty member who is your assistant. At the end of the year, you are going to publish your findings and present them at a symposium, all at the undergraduate level. The next thing I think that makes DU stand out is our study abroad program. The Sherrington Global Studies program allows students to study abroad at no additional cost than what they pay to attend DU for a quarter. That means you keep all of your financial aid and scholarship and DU covers the transportation, the visa, the passport cost. You study abroad for a semester. So you start your journey at the end of, your, end of July or beginning of August and you'll return in mid-December. So this only cuts into your fall quarter. We are ranked eighth among all colleges and universities in the country for studying abroad with 75% of our students choosing to do so with 150 partner programs that are approved by our faculty in 52 countries. So every place but Antarctica. We accept both the Common App and the Pioneer App and have been test optional for over three years. We review everything holistically with the application. Early action deadline is November 1 and decisions are released mid-December. Regular decision is January 15th for a deadline with decisions released at the end of February. And students are automatically considered for merit scholarships ranging from 10 to 30,000 per year for four years, whether you apply with a test or without. So make sure to grab that QR code for more information about the University of Denver. And my advice is to keep your balance. I wish you the very best on your college search and hope to find DU among your college choices. All right, thank you so much, DU. That was great information as well. And remember, if you want to talk with the reps, please use the Q&A button below to kind of have any conversations that you want to have with the reps this evening. Next, we're going to leave the Rocky Mountains and head down to the Palmetto State and hear from the University of South Carolina. Hello everyone, my name is Rajonda Robinson and I am the Midwest Regional for the University of South Carolina. So like you mentioned before, we are located right in the capital of, of South Carolina, which is Columbia, which gives us kind of um, a little bit of a heads up, I think. So we are the capital, so meaning that our, our university is located only two blocks away from the South Carolina State House, but we're also very much a college town where you can get discounts and everything at places like cantina um, and restaurants for just being a college student. Um, we have over 30 Fortune 500 companies right there in Columbia. We also have hospitals and all those areas where you can you know, do those really cool internships um, there's a lot of outdoor recreation, um, there's a lot of culture, there's a lot of entertainment, um, and then we're also only an hour and a half from Charlotte, we're only an hour and a half from the mountains, and we're only an hour and a half from the beach. So we kind of get to sit right there in the middle and let our students explore all of the areas around us. With our freshman class and with the students that we have at South Carolina, so we have over 34,000 total students on our campus, um, but 44%, just like Oklahoma, are from out of state. And so these are going to be our top feeder states. As you can see, Illinois is right there um, on that top 10 list. Last year, we had about 100 students from the state go down to South Carolina. Um, and this year we had over 43% increase in our applications from Illinois. So you will find someone else who knows what Portillo's is and who knows um, that we say Lake Michigan, but it's humongous. Um, and you'll know th that people, you know, know what you're talking about. As far as academics with the University of South Carolina, so we are research one institution like many of the others on this um, on this session. Um, our student faculty ratio is 17 to one. And so even though we are a large university, 85% of our classes have um, 100 students or less. We do have some of those larger classes um, 
But with those larger ones, you will have a smaller discussion section where you will meet with about 20 to 30 people from your larger class, which may have 100 students in it. Um, and you will get to um, meet with a smaller group. So if you want to ask questions, you don't have to do it in front of 200 people. You can do it in front of, you know, just 20. Um, we have over 300 unique degree opportunities. And one of the cool things is that with South Carolina, we have 56 nationally ranked programs. And that is more nationally ranked programs than the entire, every other university combined in the, in the entire state of South Carolina. Um, these are the academic colleges and schools that the University of South Carolina is um, set up into. Um, as you'll notice on this list, uh, the South Carolina Honors College is listed there, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But all of our majors, except for international business, which is number one in the country, and the College of Nursing are going to be direct admit. Um, unless you are admitted into the South Carolina Honors College. If you're admitted there, then you have free reign to be admitted directly into every other program on our campus. Um, with the College of Nursing, it's one of the areas that we are known for, and we've had a 100% pass rate on the NCLEX, which is the National Nursing Exam for the past seven years. Um, international Business has been number one for quite some time. And then our South Carolina Honors College is the number one public honors college in the country. So we put our honors college with the Carolina Elite Program. So we have the Top Scholars Program, the South Carolina Honors College, and Capstone Scholars. There's housing for both. Um, and then each year we will invite students to interview for the Top Scholars Program, which um, are going to be some of our most prestigious awards. You do have to apply to the Honors College, but you do not have to apply to the Capstone Scholars Program. When I'm reading your application, I can decide if I think that you would be a good fit for Capstone. So it's an invitation only program. With Student Life, we have over 500 student organizations on our campus. And because we are going towards the South, um, we have that outdoor pool experience and a lot of those outdoor recreation experiences that you may not get up here in Chicago. Um, but we have about 18% of our students will join a sorority or fraternity. But I and everybody else would probably agree, if you decide to join a sorority or fraternity or go Greek as we call it, I think you'll have a great time. But if you don't, the, or the student organizations are so vast that you will find something and you'll have a great time anyway. So these are some of our top employers of Gamecocks. Um, as you can see, Illinois, we get a lot of students that come back to Illinois. Um, but IBM is right on our campus and we have a lot of those different organizations and companies right in Columbia. Housing and dining, you can have students and um, that live in any of the housing options that we have on our campus. And one of the cool things about our dining options um, is that you can actually use your meal plan inside of our um, student union. So if you wanna go to Chick-fil-A, you can use the meal plan at Chick-fil-A and you don't have to just go straight over to the dining halls. We do have living and learning communities as well. So if you're interested in sport and entertainment management, you can live in housing that is dedicated to students who are in sport and entertainment management. So a little bit about the requirements um, with our application, these are going to be the required courses. I know and we all know this that fine arts is not required all the time for students in Illinois. And so we will just use something else from your transcript to fill that requirement like another academic elective. So if you took more years of lab science than needed, we'll just use that fourth year of lab science to fill that fine arts requirement. So you still have the same number of GPA points. These are going to be our middle 50% in our profile that we've had for freshmen, for honors, and then for capstone. One thing I would like to note is that the middle 50% for the ACT listed on here is not super scored, but the SAT is, but now we super score both, meaning that if you take the exam more than once, we will get your highest score based on all the um, areas that you took in. Um, if you have any questions about the classes, just let me know. Um, these are going to be our deadlines. Um, October 15th is early action non-binding. You will get your decision in December. And if you apply by December 1st, you will get your decision in February. Honors College is due November 15th. We are open for visitors. So please feel free to come down and visit. And I'm going to put my contact information into um, the chat. Um, and you can send me a message there. And you can also join our mailing list. Thank you. Thank you so much, University of South Carolina. Next, we're going to go to the Commonwealth and have the University of Kentucky. Hello, everyone, and good evening. My name is Ananaya, and I'm the Chicago Regional Admissions Counselor for the University of Kentucky, so I do live here in Illinois. 
To jump in and talk about UK, we are a large four-year public institution located in Lexington, Kentucky. We'll talk more about Lexington in a couple slides here, but we have a little over 30,000 for our total enrollment and then 22,000 students for our undergraduate population as a whole. We offer over 200 academic programs, and I'm going to name just a couple of our most popular options, engineering, nursing, psychology, education, the natural sciences, which would include biology, chemistry, and physics, as well as human health sciences are some of our most popular options for our students. And then we also do offer exploratory studies programs, which are programs for students who are undecided. So it gives you the opportunity to come in and be undecided in a specific topic area in college and uh, really kind of figure out what the best fit will be for you overall as you're going through your first and second year as a college student. Every single student does work with academic advisors, ensuring that you have everything taken care of in terms of preparing for graduation, taking the right classes. And then we offer um, over 20 different tutoring locations across our campus. Your average classroom size sits at roughly 19 students and 85% of our classes will have 50 students or fewer. So you do have opportunities for lots of connections with the professor as well as the students in the classroom. To delve into a bit of an accolade that I like to share that the University of Kentucky is one of eight institutions in the country that offers a full complement of liberal arts, engineering, professional, agricultural, and medical colleges and disciplines all on one campus. So what all of that kind of translates to is that we offer tons of opportunities for hands-on experience, for continuing your education after your bachelor's degree. We offer a medical school, dental school, pharmacy school, a physician assistant master's degree program, and a law school all on our campus. For our students that are with us this evening who are interested in pursuing the health sciences, we do have a hospital that is located on our campus. So any sort of shadowing clinical experience would take place right there, which is just a couple steps away from like your residence halls or even academic buildings. And then we also, um, being that we're in Kentucky and in Lexington, have agricultural farms such as the equestrian farm, as well as some of the agriculture areas where they work on crops as well too. If we wouldn't be able to talk about the University of Kentucky without talking about our wonderful athletes as well as the school spirit. We have 22 varsity sports and we compete in the SEC, which is the Southeastern Conference. The University of Kentucky is definitely most known for our basketball program as well as football, but it's a really great place to be on campus. Very energetic and very excited um, the student body in terms of the support that they have for all of our athletics. To talk a little bit about Lexington, it is the second largest city in the state of Kentucky, so it's really great because you have a smaller city atmosphere with a very great, very small town, family friendly atmosphere. It's also the horse capital of the world. So you have these beautiful rolling meadows of horse farms and Caneland racing track where you can go see the ponies race in the fall and in the spring. So it's a really, really unique opportunity to have really close to your campus. We offer over 550 clubs and organizations. So we have everything from academic and for pre-professional related organizations, we have Greek life, about 25% of our students are involved in that. And then organizations that are spiritually and culturally based as well as service and different hobby and interest areas too. Wanted to share some of our residence hall room types. So all of our room types are going to be suite style and have the bathroom ensuite option. Um, so you do have really great options for our living on campus. All of our mattresses are Tempur-Pedic as well, so you'll sleep very well at night. Wanted to talk really briefly about admissions as well, too. Uh, most importantly, we have extended our test optional policy, so students can apply uh, this upcoming year as test optional. So do know that it is completely up to your preference and which way you would like to submit your application. Applications will open up beginning of August. You can use the Common Application Coalition or the application, which is on our website. So please use whatever is most convenient for you. And of course, you will submit your transcripts. If you're planning on sending your test scores, you'll send your test scores. And there's also a $50 application fee. Just wanted to quickly go over this too. We do take a full holistic approach. So we're looking at everything on your application from your grades to your involvement throughout high school, as well as the essay that we do require for your application. 
Next, we're going to talk about visiting campus. We are currently offering campus tours, so you can come and visit campus anytime Monday through Friday. I will say that the tour groups are on a limited and smaller group basis, so do plan ahead so that you're able to get in and the date that works best for you. We also do have college uh, meetings where you can talk with a certain college or department or learn about a specific major, and I would highly recommend looking into those opportunities as well to learn more about the University of Kentucky. As I mentioned previously, I work with students from the state of Illinois, so please, please, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I'll also throw my contact information into the chat in case you have anything or need to reach out to me. But thank you all so much for joining us this evening and have a good one. Thank you so much, University of Kentucky. Now to finish up our evening, we want to have the panelists come back on the screen again and give our parting words and advice for the group. The question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And let's go in the order that we presented. So we'll start off with Auburn University. So I, um, well, where you go again, <laughs> um, I'm um, a little bit OCD as a person um, in my general life. And so when I'm talking to students, um, I always say, hey, you're going to be looking at a lot of different schools who have different dates and deadlines, who require different things from you guys. So I always, you know, recommend getting a little planner or some printout, um, a calendar that you can use for your whole application process. And you can even do it in different colors. So for Auburn, you could do, I don't know, orange. And for like Colorado Boulder, you could do black. For Kentucky, you could do blue. But labeling all of those schools just for different dates and deadlines from admissions to scholarship deadlines, just so you're not missing anything. Because I always say, you know, if you miss a deadline, you may be missing an opportunity to go to that school, whether that's the application itself or just like scholarship opportunity and financially being able to go to that school. So that's always my biggest advice. Be organized, get all your dates and deadlines kind of squared away. Love it. That's always one that I mention. Um, but in addition to that, I also recommend um, checking your email and it seems so simple, but we really do communicate a lot of very important information to you via email. So if you did happen to apply during that deadline, but maybe you are missing a document, we're emailing you and letting you know that. So it's super, super important to be checking your email throughout the application process. Um, and so, yeah, that's my advice is definitely don't ignore those because you just never know when they're action required. So my piece of advice is for those of you who know what you want to study or major in is to make sure that your school has other options as well. So make sure that all the schools, colleges, universities you're looking into have a variety of programs that sound good to you, even though you might have one that is like of most interest to you. But if for some reason that program doesn't work out, let's say you want to be a dentist, but science classes are not your friend that might not work out for you in the end. So just make sure that the, this college that you end up choosing has other programs that you, maybe you could switch your major um, and you wouldn't have to uh, worry about switching gears or transferring schools because the school that you chose has all of the options, even if you end up going with your first choice anyway. I'm going to play off what Heather said with the email and take it one step further. I think it's important for you to come up with a specific email for your college search and a specific email for your financial aid search. This is really important because if you're using your school email, once you graduate, that might not be available for, for communication. And so this is also another way to keep things um, streamlined for you as you are going through the process. So you know one email is the college search and those will have all the deadlines and the other ones will have the financial aid deadlines. I would say my one piece of advice is going to be, um, besides finding the school that has the majors that you're interested in, find something else. So find out if they have organizations that you're interested in, if they have sports that you're interested in, if they have a religious club that you're interested in, because I think we focus so much on the major that we don't think about that you're only in class three to four hours a day and what are you gonna do with the rest of your time? And if you are bored out of your mind, you're not gonna get the most of your experience with being at like a large school or a mid-sized school because you're not taking advantage of all the things that you could be that you could be doing. So if you're in class from eight to 12, what are you doing from 12 to you go to sleep? And so my advice is find something else 
that you would be interested in on campus because that will completely make your time. I remember so much about my extracurriculars and I remember like three things from my classes over four years. And I loved Illinois, but I could tell you so much about the people I met through the organizations, not so much my classes. So that's my piece of advice. Find something else, not just class. And my piece of advice is to create something called a brag list. So a brag list is essentially um, going to be you going through everything that you've been involved in from your freshman year through your junior year, and even as you go into your senior year, um, having that organized and ready to go for your college applications will save you so much time and even headache, making sure that you're remembering everything you've been involved in. And uh, just to give you a brief list of what you'll want to provide, it would be something as simple as clubs and organizations that you've been a part of through your high school. Uh, also doing things like having a part-time job or service work, or if you've been awarded something or been recognized for something throughout your high school. Having that organized and ready to go for your college applications will save you so much time because many of our college applications, if not majority of them, will ask for that type of information. So have it ready to go and have it easy so you can just copy and paste it over. I promise it'll save you a lot of time. All right, that was wonderful information from your reps. Thank you so much for the information. Thank you so much for your presentations, but more importantly, thank you for your time this evening. This concludes the session for the evening. After you close out this window, there'll be a quick four question survey that you'll have for us. Please don't forget to sign up for other sessions this evening as well. And also a recording of this will be available at StriveScan backslash um, Loyola next week. Reps, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate you so much. Everyone else, thank you so much for coming. You all have a wonderful evening and good night. Thank you guys for everything. See you real soon.